Okay, so today should be a pretty fun day. We're headed out to Toronto to check out the Canadian Auto Show, which I've never been to, so I'm super excited for that. But we still have some time before we have to leave, so we're gonna get some work done. Also gotta unbox these batteries, as well as SD card for my Sony ZV-E1, so I can get my camera bag packed. But yeah, let's get this going. But before doing all that, some of you guys already noticed on Instagram that I've changed up my space. So main desk is still the same, that's nothing new, but I've now added this TV cabinet looking thing here where I can just display a bunch of stuff as well as have drawers to hide cables and like camera gear and stuff. So overall this has been a lot more convenient than a second desk, but let me know what you guys think of this. I don't think I've ever really shared with you what I actually use to make these videos or what's in my camera bag. So I'll do a brief rundown with you guys, but I'm gonna be working on a what's in my camera bag video soon. So if you want a more detailed look, make sure to stay tuned for that. My main camera is the Sony ZV-E1 and I have that paired with the Sony ECM B10 shotgun microphone for audio. And this combo right here is such a killer setup, like no wires, no extra settings or battery power, just super simple and clean. And I have this combo paired with the Sony vlogging tripod or shooting grip as I believe they call it. And I picked this one up earlier this year, basically the same time I picked up the camera bag. And this is also something that I've just been loving. The function buttons on the front are super useful. And I love how quick and easy you can make adjustments. It's basically hassle-free. I threw in the extra batteries, the backup SD card, and my charge brick with the type C cable, which has been really convenient, especially back when I only used one battery because it was really easy to just find a wall plug and charge. But even now having the backup batteries, just being able to charge whenever and wherever, not only my camera, but any device is super convenient. Toronto is about a 45 minute to an hour drive away from my home, but could easily be a three to four hour drive depending on the traffic. So whenever I head out to the city, I'm always hopping on the GO train. To kill the one hour ride, I scrolled through all my social media and got caught up with any news. This has been one of my favorite things about the S24 or maybe just Android in general. And that's the fact that you can just quickly swipe left from your home screen and you get a curated list of articles and videos that you would find interesting from Google. And finally, I took some time brainstorming my thumbnail idea for this video as I already had the idea in my head, but being able to quickly sketch it out or really just chicken scratch with the S Pen is a much more convenient feature than I would have thought. First photo of the day was none other than the CN Tower. I switched over to the 200 megapixel setting and after snapping a couple photos, I zoomed in quite a bit and there was so much detail that it was actually pretty crazy. I mean like, I probably zoomed in maybe 4X on top of this 1X shot and there was very little to no blur or artifacts. I had some time to kill until the show floor opened up at the Canadian Auto Show, so I decided to stop in for a quick iced coffee and a bite to eat. As I got into the Metro Toronto Convention Center, the first stop was to pick up the media badge, which is kind of crazy to say as I've somehow gotten to the point where I can go to things as part of the media. I have no idea why or how, but hey, I'll take it. Made it to the auto show. We're gonna test out the S24 Ultra cameras. We're gonna shoot some photos, shoot some video, test out the 8K video as well as the 200 megapixel main sensor. Test out the 5X camera with the 50 megapixel lens. So let's just see how it does. It 
It's been a long time since I've really geeked out or gotten excited about cars, but being here in a place full of basically every car imaginable had me feeling like I was a kid again. From new and futuristic cars to the hyper and sports cars to the old school classics, the Canadian Auto Show really had it all. Even just seeing the Tesla Cybertruck in person for the first time was pretty cool within itself. I started snapping a couple photos of the Pagani section because the amount of detail in these cars with the whole carbon fiber exterior really made the S24 Ultra 200 megapixel sensor worth using. I also switched over to video and shot some 8K footage. Now, you won't be able to tell that this is shot in 8K because this video is going to be in 4K and exported in 4K, but punching in really showcased the detail that the 8K video captures. I also caught the Batmobile from the Dark Knight series, which was awesome to see. This was just a replica, but even so, it was such a nostalgic moment. I tested out the zoom range and captured a 5x, 1x, and ultra wide photo, and having this kind of versatility was really handy as you couldn't get that close to this car. As the auto show was closing up, it was time to grab a bite to eat because the hunger really started to kick in. I stopped in at one of my favorite restaurants for a pizza, and then of course it started to snow because it's February in Canada, and then I decided to make a pretty spontaneous purchase. All right, so we just wrapped up at the auto show and might have just accidentally bought some leaf tickets, so we got some time to kill, so now I'm gonna edit some photos on the S24 Ultra. As someone who loves editing photos on the iPad, this kind of felt right at home for me. Like using the S Pen gave finer and more accurate control over the editing process, just like an Apple Pencil would. It was also great to use all the AI features when it comes to photo editing, like using the generative fill or masking out objects and people. And also just the remaster edits seemed to not only do a good job, but it also did it at a pretty fast pace. I also spent some time scrolling TikTok and then quickly posting a few stories on IG of the auto show before heading to the arena. As I made my way into the Scotiabank arena, I decided to shoot strictly with the S24 Ultra, mainly due to the fact that although I was allowed in with my camera, I got a little nervous pulling it out to capture the game. I did pull out the camera and take one quick clip, so I wonder if you can catch which clip it is. The Leafs ended up taking this one in OT against the Flyers, and Matthew scored himself a hat trick, which was pretty fun to see. I hopped back on the train to head home and only had 13% battery left, which I gotta say was actually really impressive. I mean, I spent the whole day in the camera app capturing high megapixel photos in both 4K and 8K video, and not to mention all the casual social media browsing here and there, texting and the photo editing. I spent the train ride home scrolling some more headlines, and it's been kind of hard to stay away from the news with all the Apple Vision Pro stuff going on, especially because it hasn't made its release yet here in Canada yet, so... The FOMO really is hitting hard. Oh, and I was also able to quickly charge up my camera, which was super convenient since now I don't have to do this when I get home. <sighs> it is 12.23 AM the next day. I have 9% battery. That's pretty good. That's that's more battery than I have energy right now. But I got to figure out how I can transfer all the photos and videos from the S24 Ultra to my Mac. I used the image capture app on the Mac the last time. It worked, but it was kind of confusing because it loads like every file on the phone. There's no real like organization or good way to sort things out. So maybe there's like an app or something or maybe just something I'm missing. I don't know. But we're gonna figure this out. 
Hopefully it doesn't take too long because I I'm exhausted. So it seems like you can do this automatically through Dropbox, which if you can, that is gonna be amazing because I already use Dropbox for everything already. And especially if it can do it automatically, that is gonna be a lifesaver. You just need the app, which I'm not signed into. I Oh, actually, okay, quick tip. If you are switching from iOS to Android or even Mac to Windows and you are using the iCloud keychain, be prepared to get super frustrated and annoyed because you need an Apple device to get your passwords. There's no other way unless you have an Apple device. So if you're making a switch to a different operating system other than Apple's, be prepared. Okay, so I hit upload about a minute ago and it seemed to be going pretty fast. And, oh wow, yeah. yeah. Dang, it's, that was really fast, but everything's like here. Full quality, that's in 4K. I did not expect this to be so smooth. I mean, all my footage is here. I'm gonna transfer this over to my SSD tomorrow because like I said, I am exhausted, but even though I am exhausted, I am probably gonna scroll TikTok until my battery dies.